You may be asking, hey Jacob, why are you guys covering the VIC-20 after you covered the Commodore 64? Well, the answer is simple. We didn't own a VIC-20 until today. Hey guys, it's Jacob with Tech Retrospective. Today we are going to be taking a look at the VIC-20, an amazing system often overshadowed by its younger brother. Released in early 1981, the VIC-20 was Commodore's desire for a low-cost gaming computer. It was both a brutal and amazing time to be a computer developer. The VIC-20 is the result of combining several spectacular projects that failed due to technicalities. The MOS 6502 processor proved to be a good processor choice, despite the fact that using MOS display chips would have forced Commodore to basically create an Apple II clone. Commodore took elements from the TOI, or the Other Intellect system, the MicroPet, which was a promising prototype, rushed to production that ultimately failed, the PET, and their new VIC display chip, a 16-color display chip designed to be multi-purpose, to be used in products ranging from arcade games, to terminal displays at airports, to EKG monitors. The VIC chip was a pretty powerful display chip for 1981. Although it lacked hardware sprites, it was still a 16 color graphics chip with some clever programming tricks behind it. The lack of hardware sprites is an issue. Poorly made VIC-20 games look terrible since everything is made by redefining on-screen characters, causing movement to be jerky with huge outlines on these makeshift sprites whereas a good VIC-20 game looks like a slightly chunkier C64 game. The VIC chip also handles sound. It has three voices arranged as low, medium, and high voices, and a white noise generator. One major limit of the VIC chip sound is the lack of ADSR, meaning that the voices are either always on or always off with no control over individual voice volume or wave customization for more realistic sound. But that was good enough for making the Pac-Man jingle on the start screen. Another quirk of the system was its RAM, or lack thereof. The system only has 5K of RAM, which for a 70s system is pretty average, but for an 80s system is anemic. To make things worse, only 3.5K is actually usable for programs. That's not much. A consequence of this is that almost all software for the VIC came on cartridge, since that added 16 kilobytes of ROM to be used by the program. Our unit was purchased on eBay for $40, including the original box. There are actually two versions of the VIC-20. We have the older pre-1982 version with a 9-volt AC power connector and a slightly different badge. Newer units had a DC power input and a different keyboard. On the right side of our system, you can see a controller port, an aftermarket power switch, which is quite satisfying to mess with, and the AC power connector. On the back, you'll find a cartridge slot, audio video out port, serial peripheral port, cassette interface port, and the user port. Commodore offered a dedicated monitor for the VIC-20, which gave it a graphics advantage over many home computer systems at the time due to the use of composite video. Output could be sent to a regular television using an RF converter. And now for the ratings. Rarity gets a 2 out of 5. These systems are quite common. In fact, I'd argue they're easier to find than the Commodore 64. Despite selling less, C64s tend to be held onto more by collectors, whereas VIC-20s are kind of disposable. Price gets a 4 out of 5. These systems are very cheap, especially when compared to the still climbing price of the 64. Aesthetics get a 3 out of 5. The VIC-20 has a good mix of cost-cutting decisions and iconic design. Nothing about it sets the world on fire, though. You know, except its power supply. Software gets a 3 out of 5. The VIC-20's library of early 80s arcade games is pretty great, but if that's not your thing, there isn't much else on this system for you. Ease of repair gets a 5 out of 5. VIC-20s are very rugged, and repair guides and parts are very easy to source. 
Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Please let me know what computers you want to see us cover in the future. Be sure to check out our Commodore 64 first look video, the successor to this system, and check out our Discord. And of course, you can support us on Patreon so we can keep buying more computers. And I'll see you guys next time.